Good morning, I am Devi Sena. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about energy bands in solids. Energy band. The solid crystals are formed when the isolated atoms are brought together. However, when two atoms are brought close to each other, it leads to intermixing of electrons in the valence shell. As a result, the number of permissible energy levels is formed, which is called an energy band. Valence band conduction band equations. The valence band comprises the highest energy electrons in the solid, and the conduction band is the lowest empty belt where electrons can remain. These bands are the permissible bands. The energy band between the permissible bands is the band gap or forbidden band where the electrons cannot exist. Forbidden energy gap. Forbidden energy gap, also known as band gap, refers to the energy difference between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band in materials. Current flowing through the materials is due to the electron transfer from the valence band and to the conduction band. Here is the representation of valence band and conduction band. The valence band is the band where the highest energy level electrons are available and the conduction band is the band where the lowest empty band that the electrons can remain. This is represented here. Band gap representation in metal, semiconductor and insulator. Here is a representation. If you consider about the conductor means in the conductor there is a metal, the valence band as well as the Conduction band are overlapped with each other. There is no band gap in the metal. That is the conductor. Now, if you look into the semiconductor means, the valence band and conduction band are separated by a small band gap. Now, if you look into the insulator means, the valence band and conduction band are separated by a wide band gap. This is represented in this diagram. Band gap representation. Consider about the conductor. In the conductor, the valence band and conduction band are overlapped with each other. So, there is no band gap in the conductor. Now, look into the semiconductor. In the semiconductor, in between the valence band and the conduction band, there is a small band gap. Because of this, the semiconductors are not conducting the current at room temperature. If the temperature is increased, there is a decrease in the band gap. Due to this decrease in the band gap, when the temperature rises, there is a flow of current in the semiconductor. Now, if you look into the insulator means, the valence band and the conduction band are separated by a wide band gap due to this, even though if the temperature is increased to a large extent, it is not possible for the electrons that is present in the valence band to jump to the conduction band. So, the insulators are the solids that are not conducting either heat or current. Flow of electrons in good conductor, semiconductor and insulator. In this animation, if you look into the good conductor means large amount of electrons are available. These free electrons are responsible for the flow of current in the good conductor. Now, consider about the semiconductor. In the semiconductor, 
the number of free electrons is less when compared to the good conductor. So at room temperature, the semiconductor is acting as an insulator. Now, if the room temperature is increased, means the semiconductor starts conducting. That is, the behavior of the semiconductor changed from the insulator to the conductor when the temperature is increased. Now, if you look into the insulator, means there is no free electrons in the insulator because the free electrons are responsible for the flow of current. Due to this characteristics, there is no flow of current in the insulator. Conductors. In the conductors, the free electrons are responsible for the flow of current. There is a representation. Just a conductor is connected between the battery. If the supply is applied to the conductor means the free electrons are moving from one direction to the other direction. Due to this movement of the free electrons, the current is flowing in the conductor. It is represented here. Free electrons movement in the semiconductor representation. Consider about the semiconductor. In this semiconductor, at room temperature, the band gap between the valence band and the conducting band are dark. Now, if the temperature is increased, it means the free electrons that are present in the valence band jump to the conduction band. And in the valence band, holes are created. Now, the free electrons that are present in the conduction band are responsible for the flow of current in the semiconductors. Insulator representation. In this insulator, there is no free electrons present. Because of the absence of the free electrons, the insulators are not able to conduct effect of temperature on semiconductors. The first effect we are going to discuss about at absolute zero. The electrical conductivity of a semiconductor changes appreciably with temperature variations. At absolute zero temperature, all the electrons are tightly held by the semiconductor atoms. The inner orbit of electrons are formed, whereas the valence electrons are engaged in covalent bonding. At this temperature, the covalent bonds are very strong and there are no free electrons above absolute zero. When the temperature is raised, some of the covalent bonds in the semiconductor break due to the thermal energy applied. The breaking of bonds says those electrons free which are engaged in the formation of these bonds. The result is that a few free electrons exist in the semiconductor. These free electrons can constitute a tiny electric current if potential difference is applied across the semiconductor crystal. Electric current. An electric current is a stream of charged particles such as electrons or ions moving through an electrical conductor or space. It is measured as the net rate of flow of electric charge through a surface or into a control volume. Electron current. An electron current is a stream of charged particles such as electrons or bones moving through an electrical conductor or space. Here is the representation of flow of electrons in the conductor. In this animation, we are seeing the flow of electrons from the higher potential level to the lower potential level. That is, atoms with negatively charged neutrons orbiting the positively charged nucleus. This is 
represented in this division. Conventional current. Conventional current is the flow of a positive charge from positive side to negative and is the reverse of real electron flow. Conventional current flows in one way, whereas the electrons flow the other way. In this diagram, the conventional current as well as the electron current is represented. Conventional current representation is shown here. In this diagram, we are seeing the DC power source is connected in a closed circuit. And the conventional current is drawn from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. The current flow is represented here. Large current and the small current representation is shown here. In this large current, many charges flowing. And if you look into the small current representation, means only few charges are there. Due to this, small current is flowing. Thank you very much for listening this lecture. For further updates, kindly subscribe this channel. If you like this video means kindly share this video to your friends. Thank you.